Hello everyone, we are back at the Gashima Memorial, it's round 7 and it's a matchup everyone's been waiting for, they are good friends, even better rivals, uh, it's uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen versus Anish Giri who is uh, not having the greatest tournament so far, and uh, now he gets uh, the black pieces against the world champion, uh, you know, li life could be better. Uh, but everyone's already saying a lot of nice things about this game, It's uh, I've seen it, it's really impressive. Uh, but I'm gonna let you decide if it's if it's really uh, that impressive. So without further ado, let's just check it out. Uh, Magnus, uh, after six rounds, uh, sharing the lead with Sergei Karakin. So let's see let's see how it goes. Uh, Carlson opens with c4, the English opening, and Giri replies with e5. Uh, we have knight to c3, knight to f6, knight to f3, and the knight to c6, the four knights variation of the English, uh, and the g3. Carlson prepares the fianchetto, the light square bishop. Uh, we have d5, Giri uh, attacks in the center, we have c captures, knight captures, and just bishop to g2. Uh, Giri develops the bishop, bishop c5 prepares the castle, uh, both players now castle, we have castles, castles, uh, and just d3. Uh, we have h6 by Giri, and now knight captures on d5, queen captures on d5, and just a3, uh, preparing b4. There are no good discoveries with the knight, so for the moment uh, there's no way, uh, good way to take advantage of this uh, very nice... Uh, Oh, well, X-raying of the bishop towards the queen. Uh, with a5 by Giri, preventing b4, and now just bishop to d2, preparing to develop this bishop to this very nice diagonal from where the bishop will hopefully be able to harass the king. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, queen to e6, uh, just getting the queen out of this uh, nasty diagonal, uh, and also the, the, the pawn is now, uh, the e5 pawn is now further defended. Uh, we have rook to c1, attacking the bishop, and now queen to e7. You could move the bishop, uh, but Giri also wants to develop the bishop to e6. So first queen to e7, guarding the bishop, and now the light square bishop can also be developed. Uh, we have bishop to c3, now getting the bishop to the desired diagonal, uh, and knight to d4 by Giri. Uh, we have e3, uh, offering a trade on f3, uh, Giri accepts, we have knight captures, queen captures on f3, and now just uh, bishop back to d6. Uh, and here Carlsen uh, devises a, a brutal plan, here he plays queen to h5. Uh, and okay, uh, if you can play a queen to h5, your opponent doesn't have any knights, well you don't have any knights yourself, but uh, you do have a, a very nice bishop on c3. Uh, and uh, if you can get your rooks into the game somehow, for the moment it seems like it will not be that easy to bring the rooks into the game. Uh, but uh, Carlsen finds a way. Here Giri goes c6, uh, and now the move that really uh, impressed everyone, it's the move that, uh, well, basically... Uh, this is the move that, that uh, made the game what it is. Here, Carlsen plays f4. And okay, for, first, you don't uh, think it's uh, anything impressive, but after Giri captured, e captures on f4. Uh, here, the normal reply, the engine's favorite reply, and just, you know, the common sense reply is e captures on f4. Just uh, getting rid of your uh, weak pawn, you will have a nice pawn on f4, you're blocking your opponent's bishop, uh, you're probably going to bring this rook over to e1, and it's just going to be a very nice position for white. Uh, but here it seems that uh, Carlsen is uh, running out of uh, fuel to, to troll to, <laughs> Giri with on Twitter uh, and he plays G captures on F4 and it's a really impressive move uh, because it, it invites Giri to capture on E3 three with check uh, and that's something you just, uh, I don't know, it's just a very impressive idea. Uh, so uh, Giri decides to capture it. We have queen captures on e3 uh, with check, king to h1, and now a really delicate position. Uh, Giri plays rook to d8. Uh, there is also the possibility of going f6, just blocking Carlsen's very strong bishop. Uh, and now after the variation, bishop to e4 with the plan queen g6 to h7. Uh, this is how you prevent it. First, queen to h3. You offer a trade of queens. Queen to g6, and now bishop to g4. Uh, you actually allow this, queen to h7. And after this check, king to f7, bishop to g6 check, king to e6, now comes rook to e1 check, uh, and now king to d7. And it seems you were able to escape. Queen captures on g7 with check, king to c8, and it's a really long king walk, but... <laughs> um, uh, it, it actually works for black, but uh, who in, in their right mind would go for something like this? Uh, so again, it's one of those positions where it's actually okay to play f6, but here Giri went for rook to d8, uh, and Carlsen just uh, continues with his uh, attack. We have rook to e1, 
Uh, of course, there's uh, no point in further capturing of the pawns. We have queen to c5. Gary now wants to trade queens and, of course, calls and decline. We have f5. Uh, stifling the development of Giri's light square bishop, uh, and also now uh, a lot of rook lifts are possible. Uh, so here, what do you do? Again, it's a very delicate position. If you play a slow move like bishop to d7, uh, then Carlsen had in mind bishop captures on g7, king captures and now f6 with check. King moves and now queen captures on h6, threatening checkmate, and after bishop blocks, let's say bishop to f8, you will just move the queen, and now there's uh, really whatever black plays you're just gonna make a nice rook lift and win the game there's there's no defense here from black's perspective uh, so after f5 giri immediately rushes back with the bishop with bishop to f8 guarding g7 so no uh, bishop captures on g7 is possible uh, but now just bishop to e4 strengthening the f5 pawn and uh, uh, seeing what giri will play and again f6 now uh, doesn't work because now you can capture on f6 with the bishop bishop captures uh, and now after g captures on f6 now you have the open g file rook g1 check after bishop blocks you can even capture it uh, king captures and now just queen g6 check king f8 queen captures on f6 with check king to e8 and now uh, a nice discovery bishop captures on c6 will be checkmate so a really a really poisonous position and uh, giri has to be very careful what he's doing here and of course uh, due to this he's wasting a lot of time uh, so here rook to d5 giri tries to offer uh, the rook uh, at least to prevent uh, carlson's attack for a little bit uh, but carlson isn't interested in this uh, here he goes rook to f3 not rook to g1 rook to g1 would be uh, uh, would be premature as you would allow bishop captures on f5 and after for example queen captures on h6 you don't have a good attack because uh, bishop captures uh, on e4 with check d captures and now you can block the, the bishop with uh, rook to d4 and uh, well it's uh, why black black survives that's the point so here after this rook to d5 Carlson isn't interested in that here goes rook to f3 uh, this rook is still keeping an eye on the f5 pawn and rook to g1 is now uh, going to be played uh, Giri first plays rook to b5 uh, sorry b5 and now comes rook to g1 uh, we have rook to a7, trying to bring the other rook to help out with the defense. And now uh, capturing on h6 would be a terrible mistake. If you capture it, then of course you see how black counters this. Uh, yes, you cannot capture because the pawn is pinned, but you just unpin it. Queen captures on g1 uh, and, uh, well, black will be up a whole rook. Uh, so you have to be very careful. Here Carlsen plays bishop to f6, and it's a beautiful move. It's just a nice bone for Geary to play with. Uh, I mean, what do you do here? Uh, not, Carlson's not interested in this. Uh, Giri's bishop, okay, helping out with the defense. The light square bishop not doing all that much. Uh, the rook sort of in the game, but not really. How do you how do you proceed here? It's very hard to to, to decide what to do here. Uh, of course, you cannot capture anything. The pawn is still pinned. Uh, so here, Giri plays g6, and here is uh, well the very critical moment in the game. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the best idea for white here. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are uh, an extremely precise player. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move uh, Carlsen played is queen to h3, but the quickest way is actually to just grab on g6 uh, right away. Uh, because now after pawn captures and queen captures, yes, black will block with the rook, rook g7, uh, but now you get bishop captures on g7. And now whatever black plays, uh, white just wins. Uh, if you go and uh, capture the bishop, uh, then you just get uh, rook to g3, threatening checkmate. And after the queen blocks, now it's just bishop captures with check. Uh, pawn captures and now f6 and you will of course win back even more material uh, you are left with a completely winning endgame uh, on the other hand there is this queen to c1 check but it's not a problem if black doesn't capture but rather goes queen c1 check uh, you can go king g2 this is the move you had to find probably the one Carlson wasn't interested in looking for uh, and then after queen g5 the only move that uh, allows black to continue this game will leave you up a piece just captures captures and after bishop captures captures uh, not even needing to capture here you could also 
capture on g7, and now just f6 check, king moves, bishop captures here. Uh, you are not up a piece, but you are up the exchange, uh, you are up two pawns, and it, it's a completely winning endgame for white. So it's uh, really curious why Carlsen didn't go for rook captures on g6, uh, but it's uh, move 25, Giri was very low on time, perhaps he didn't want to allow Giri to, uh, time to think during Carlsen's uh, thinking time. So okay, here Carlsen goes back for a moment, we have queen to h3, uh, and now just rook to d6. Uh, getting the rook out of harm's way and also threatening to capture the bishop. Uh, now Carlsen defends it again, queen to h4, and now uh, Giri decides to, to give back, uh, to give up the exchange. Uh, we have rook captures on f6, queen captures on f6, and now bishop to e7, uh, forcing the queen to move, but now just queen captures on c6. Carlsen decides, okay, I've attacked enough, it's time to trade down uh, into a completely winning endgame, and uh, Giri, Giri trades. We have queen captures, bishop captures, uh, and now just king to g7. Uh, f captures, we have f captures, and now d4. Carlsen has a passed pawn, he decides to push it, of course. Uh, we have a4, and now comes even d5. Uh, we have b4 by black, uh, and um, uh, now Carlsen goes just bishop to e8, threatening rook to e7 check, but also rook captures uh, on g6. So here bishop to g5, blocking this, if you push g5 then h4 is an option, but here after bishop g5, uh, h4 uh, just as well. Uh, bishop captures, doesn't really matter what you do, uh, we have rook captures on g6 with check, uh, king goes to h7, and now rook back to c6 with an attack against the bishop. Uh, Giri played bishop to g4 with an attack against Carlsen's rook. Rook to f4 was played, now both of the bishops are under attack. Uh, and here, uh, rook to g7 has been played. Uh, and it was in this position uh, on move 39 that uh, Anish Giri not resigned, but uh, he lost on time. Uh, but it's just as well. I mean, whatever you play, uh, doesn't really matter. You could go a capture some b4. Now you have two pass pawns. You can pretty much choose which one you want to push. Uh, completely winning endgame. There's nothing black can do here. Uh, but yeah, uh, really, really an impressive game by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, I mean, really, really crushed the Geary there. And uh, that, I mean, how do you, how do you decide to play? It's uh, uh, he must have had a, a very nice rest today, two days ago. Uh, I've seen uh, on, on Twitter he did play some football, as he usually does. Uh, but here, after this uh, f4, e captures, and now not e captures, but rather g captures. This is, uh, this is, this is real chess. This is very impressive, and, uh, well, this is what we all enjoy. And especially when you see the world champion plays a move like, <laughs> instead of this, g captures on f4, uh, allowing this uh, all almighty <laughs> check. Uh, it's uh, just super impressive. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, an extremely well-deserved victory for Magnus Carlsen, and uh, I will show the standings now, so for those of you who haven't uh, seen it, you know, clo close your ears uh, or eyes, uh, here it is, uh, sorry about that. Nope, not that, uh, but this. There you have it. Uh, all of the other games have been drawn. So here, after seven rounds, Carlsen again in the sole lead uh, with five points after beating uh, Anish Giri. Uh, with four and a half points, only person Sergei Karyakin. Uh, then with three and a half, a lot of people. Vishwanathan Anand still in third. David Navara, Ding Liren, Alexander Grishuk, uh, Veselin Topolov, and Timur Rajabov. And then with two and a half points, Shahrir Mamedyarov and Anish Giri, who is having the worst tournament, uh, well, maybe ever since he became an elite player uh, in last place with two points. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's chess, things will happen, so, you know, everyone can have a bad tournament, it's it's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, uh, that uh, after that, Rook uh, to G7, Anish Giri lost on time, and just a very, very impressive game. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, what do you think about the game? Is it is it uh, really what uh, everyone is uh, saying that it's? Uh, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call it like the best game of the year or anything like that so far. It's a very impressive game, but that just that decision to play G captures on F4 uh, really takes uh, takes it to a whole new level. So I, I'm very happy that this game even happened, uh, and and I hope you are too. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would also like to present you with uh, a position for you to solve. It's a position from a game I played today. It's a tournament game. Uh, I played against the French and I had this position. So it's, um, it's a very nice position. I was able to win it. And uh, there is a, a tactical line here that wins for white. So if you're interested, I also feel free to to pause the video and try to solve it. Uh, if you will comment on it, then just write it's the bonus position. The the solution is this. Uh, but you know, it's a, it's a really, really an intense position. So I, I was very happy I handled it properly. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Joshua Grindrod, uh, Buzz Berger, Robert Palmer, Holy Boyd, and Robert Kiefer for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully with some more interesting content, checking up on what's what in the world, continuing the Capablanca saga, and of course, as usual, uh, checking up on your suggestions. Uh, thank you all, and uh, I, I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your Sunday.